Well, hey, good about your Monday morning, and I hope you're doing well, and that, that things are good, and you had a good weekend. Looking forward to a great week. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. We've looked at the last couple weeks, last three weeks. And what's interesting is, you know, we began kind of with the use of phrase of bookends of 1 through 5 and 14 through 18 because they, they talked about Jesus as the Word. The Word was God, is God, and the Word is man. And so we, those two went together as we looked at those critical truths. Sandwiched in between that, verses 6 through 8 introduce us briefly to John the Baptist. But then verses 9 through 13, basically... They, they, they pull together how the Word can work in our lives. It seems like John's saying, listen, you, you got Jesus fully God and Jesus fully man. Now, this is how you put it together. This is how it works out. This is how you can apply it in all that you're doing. And so let me read 9 through 13 and uh, just kind of hear this for a moment and process back through. If you were with us yesterday, just kind of take some of those things and, and let them work together. If you weren't with us yesterday, Love for you to go back um, at the church website, at our YouTube channel, and uh, pick it up from yesterday. But here's what uh, John said. He said, This was the true light that, coming into the world, enlightens every person. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. And yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not accept him. But as many as received him... To them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the f will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So he's speaking to both sides here, and, and just notice how he fleshes that out, and the faith that we can have, that through faith we can know and be children of the living God. You know, he was the true light, which he mentioned about God in verse uh, up there in verses uh, three and four. Uh, he enlightens us. He was in the world. Jesus fully man. He came into the world. The world did not know him. He came to his own. That would be coming to the Jewish people. And we know that the Jewish people as a group did not embrace Christ. That wasn't true of all of them, obviously. But as, as a group, they, in their understanding of Messiah, they did not see Christ as the Messiah. So, John is saying, listen, this God-man came. He came to the people that were his, his Jewish background, his Jewish blood, his Jewish lineage, all that stuff. And pretty much they just had nothing to do with him. Now, sometimes we hear that and say, well, all hope is lost. He'll just ride off into the sunset or whatever and, and, and go away. But that's not what happened. As John says in verse 12, but as many as received him, Jew Gentile. To them he gave the right to become children of God. But notice the, the condition to those who believe in his name. See, we don't come to Christ because of our lineage, because of our background. We don't come to Christ because we're a good Jew or a good Gentile. We don't come to Christ because our grandparents or parents went to church and took us to church. We don't none of that stuff factors in. The only thing that factors in is I have God the Word, Jesus, sitting there before me, and what do I do with him? Do I embrace him as who he says he is, or do I not embrace that? Because it goes ahead and, and 13 says it's not because of flesh or what your parents or, or any man wants. Salvation is through God in God alone. So I want to encourage you today. I know probably most of this audience, most of us probably have a relationship with Christ. Um, if you do, how are you living that out? Are you living out like it's on your own? Or are you living under the authority of Christ working in your life and letting him just bring fruition and bring be that true light in your life and, and guiding you? Now, if you're in the audience today and, and you don't have a relationship with Christ. This is your opportunity. Simply admit that you're a sinner in need of God's forgiveness, that you can't save yourself. Only the blood of Christ can save you and his sacrifice on the cross 
And right where you're sitting right now or standing or whatever you're doing, pause and ask him to come into your life, be your Savior and Lord, commit yourself to him. And it's not based on what you know or who you know. It's based on his grace. So I just want to encourage us today. John gave us two crucial truths as we began the book of John. Who Jesus is as the word. How's he God? How's he man? But it's all to be drawn into that purpose that he saves us. And I pray that for you and I pray that for me. Let's pray to God. Father, may we understand this today. May we allow you to work in us that these great theological truths of Jesus is fully God and Jesus is fully man, those are awesome. But Father, they have to ultimately be applied to our heart and to our mind and to our life. So may we allow them to work in us today. We May we allow them to change us today. And may we be obedient to the truth. In Christ's name, amen. All right, guys. Well, hey, I love you. I hope you have a great week. Um, remember that uh, next Wednesday, not this Wednesday, but next Wednesday, we'll have a macho gathering on the 1st of November. I hope you can make that. And uh, a lot of cool things are going on. So hope you're well. If you need anything, please let me know. Take care.